we look at some critical economic issues headlining today, joining me in this discourse is international finance and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed. Thanks for joining me, Mokhtar. Thank you, Justin, for having me. All right, let's start with uh, the budget issue. Last week, there was a conundrum about padding and several allegations, and several people were talking about marginalization. But let's look critically at some parameters used in that same budget, specifically the forex rate, which was pegged at 800 naira, that there about last year. We know the present reality of today. Now, Senate is looking ahead and running against supplementary budget like we always do have. But how significant or walkable is this uh, 2024 budget in terms of differentials in what we have earmarked last year and what we have faced as of today? Well, and just in some time, the Senate seems to be um, saying the right thing, but hopefully they'll be able to do the right thing that's on the thing. Um, yes, but again, they are looking at it from one angle. Um, the budget was stacked at 800, and today the exchange is about 1,500. And so if you look that, you, you realize that the budget, um, the, the exchange has gone up almost by over 90%. So that means um, the, the, the budget has significantly gone up by 90%. I mean, what the amount for eight eight hundred thousand is about one point five million. So mm -hmm. that's in the that's in to, to them that they have excess cash. Um, that's why the the Senate is saying that you you don't have to come back to get um, supplementary budget because by that you mean you have excess cash. But now the Senate is forgetting to say, okay, you're looking at it that, that way. The other way you have to look at it is that uh, foreign debt payment was also tagged at that amount, which was uh, eight hundred was one thousand dollars. But today, again, $1,000 now is $1.5. So what you think you've gained in one hand, you lose also in the other hand. So there, there must be a balance. And again, if you talk about internally, OK, fine. But when you talk about externally, that means our standard debt has gone up again by over 90 something mm -hmm. percent. Exactly. Uh, I was going to say that. But with the depreciation of the Naira from about um, 800 900 to the dollar to about over 1,500, but the Senate is saying that we should not increase our budget size. But it is talking already about some sort of um, savings, really. But uh, do you think this move that of um, if uh, that's if we decide to go for supplementary budget, that it might actually uh, worsen the issue of um, inflation that we have right now? Yes, I, I think it depends. Um, if you are going for that based on non, the non-productive sector, then you're worsening the inflationary pressure. But if you are going to do that with the productive sector, then you, you are also reducing the inflationary pressure. And I like this is the, or the way I look at it. When you look at the, the, the budget mark at 800 naira, um, that was also for the, for the, it was not for the productive sector. It was for expenditure. It was for capital uh, expenditure, yeah. especially recurrent expenditure, which has to do with debt payment and that and that. So if you look at it from that, from that angle, then you have a lot of liquidity in, in, the, in, in the system. Mm. But you look at it, if um, this was based on the um, 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 capital expenditure, or where if, if the rate at importation of goods that comes in were at 800, why um, 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 pay a left luxury was at 1,500, then you you see that the, then the cost of food will go down, the mm. cost of so many things imported will go down, yeah. and that also will drive down inflation. So. It depends. Is it reduction that we are seeing or heightening that we are seeing? Is it in the productive sector or is it in the sector that is not um, so much productive to the economy? Because what we've seen, uh, like the CBN governor have said, that uh, the 10 trillion that was printed printed by the CBN at the former administration of Godwin Mifili was used in not in the productive sector, was also used for consumption. So um, corruption, consumption and other things. So we need to look at, if we are trying to deal with mm. inflation, then we need to look at our economy critically right. and begin to look at the productive sector to handle the same challenges. All right, I still to get a, a bit of a clearer picture right now. Okay, the summit says uh, that we earn about 60% of our revenue in dollars. And as such, the fall of the Naira against the dollar has created some sort of um, huge savings, I'm just quoting them verbatim, for the country. 
what is the true picture really bearing in mind that uh, we're still servicing debt and i'm thinking that uh, since it's also denominated in dollars we are actually paying more and if there is any savings per se what should we be channeling there i know you talked about uh, infrastructure and all of that but then what should we be doing with these so-called uh, savings as it were well justin i don't think how they have savings this is a government that is even struggling to meet up his uh this budget deficit, a lot of promises that have made this a government that have not been able to even uh, pay minimum wage, despite going into many agreements. Now, what they are doing is payment of allowances. So, I I, I think, um, like you said, it in your one hand, you think you are saving, in the other hand, you are paying debt. So, it's like a man that is saying, I'm saving money and he's still in debtedness. He's still indebted, mm -hmm. and the debt keep going, the debt is going up, and he's saying, I'm saving. So, by the time you knock up the debt to the savings, then he doesn't have anything. So there's a common sense when it comes to personal finances. The first thing they tell you to do, you save, and the second thing you do, you pay your debt. Mm. And after that, other money begins to go into other productive sector. Mm. So because when you are in, in that is both of your asset and your liability. So you mm. try to reduce your liability every time you earn income. So in this case now, instead of earning income to, in, to reduce our liability, our liability has increased and our income has come down. Mm. Because again, like they say, 60% of what we earn comes from food. Mm. And as it stands today, we are not able to meet up our look, our, our consumption, um, our open quota. So we are mm. not earning more, and then we need to service the debt. So there must be a balance. So there must be a critical and look at it and come up with a good understanding of what policy really you want to drive, mm. whether you are looking at savings. Now, savings ordinary should be good. And when you look at what is the benchmark that we're used to saving, because most of our savings actually come from the oil benchmark, mm -hmm. and that's why we have the sovereign wealth fund. They are the ones to manage some of these savings and put it into key uh, capital infrastructure, like what they did in the second Niger and others. So, uh, it's those savings are not there yet. I don't think so because the government is still struggling to meet up um, some liquid demand. But it's always good to have savings. Okay. But as it stands now, uh, it's apparently very difficult, especially with the exchange rate. All right. Uh, let's uh, look at something uh, equally as um, interesting that also is affecting every one of us, that which is inflation. Uh, uh, inflation rose to about 31.70% um, in February. Uh, that's um, according to what uh, the NBS released uh, to us uh, last week, although some uh, a school of thought believes is even higher than that. But my main concern is an analysis done by Narometrics, uh, which says uh, food inflation jumped to about... 29.8%. What does this mean in clear terms amid uh, this narrow depreciation that we have? What should be our concern right now, Mukhtar? Yeah, our concern is, to, is first of all to feed ourselves. And um, unfortunately, we are not doing that yet. And it's not that the farmer does not have the capability to feed us. But again, they have to deal with a lot of challenges. One most a critical one they are dealing with it has to do with uh, security challenges and uh, by the time they are finished in with security they are dealing with energy costs high energy costs and also uh, um, when you talk about energy costs you now move also to the to the to the to the transportation sector high cost of um, transporting of their goods and choices that imply increase their their cost of production so um definitely what should we be doing now i think government should be thinking of how they can intervene because they've tried to say they have intervened, they release meal, they will release meals, um, they release all of these things into the economy, uh, into households to reduce um, um, food costs. But they've not done it because they've not really come out with a clear cost strategy. Uh, you need to look at Lagos, what Lagos State is doing. Now. There's a market every Sunday, they list those markets that people can go there and buy goods at an affordable price. So they also should begin to think of how they can support the farmers also to, so that they can bring down the cost of production. Then when the cost of production comes down, the cost of those goods will come down. Because what you think, somebody, thinks, somebody will say, ah, you don't buy food in dollars. But again, look at the rising cost of energy. And these people have to buy diesel to power their generators or to power their, their, their plant. So most of these uh, um, 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 diesel, the cost has gone up. So they have to transfer it there and this is due to the exchange rate volatility so i think um, what the government should do is to see how they can intervene especially in the operational work uh, network of these farmers where they can bring down the cost of production in turn by doing that they also would have brought down the cost of some of these goods and services 
All right, still talking about what government should uh, be doing. Uh, the CBN is set to hold its second MPC uh, meeting for the year next week, uh, where the committee will be deliberating um, a hold or a high stance following the 400, 400 basis points increase in the previous one. What are your thoughts, really, with this MPC meetings and uh, all that is going on with um, the Monetary uh, Policy Committee in Nigeria? Well, uh, they've been on the highest um, rate hike um, for a very long time. I mean, the highest maybe in 15 years. So um, I don't expect them to do anything less than just maintaining their seeing how um, that rate can help improve the economy going forward. But you, you're not expected to see economic impact of a of rate hike that it did last month. And then it will also be suicidal for it to continue to hit. Rates hike, like I always say, the, the developed economies are different from us. They, develop, they are different from us because what they do, they have the data, they have the variable to look at this in the short. Example is that the British, the Britain, and Britain and United States started, even some European Union, France, they started hiking rate almost at the same time with us to control inflation, to control distortion in terms of food supply because of the Russian Ukraine crisis. But today, their rate has come down, but our own is going up. So that shows that. Mm -hmm. There is something missing, and that missing link is what the CBN should be looking at and beginning to address. And they know the missing link has to do with um, FX volatility. So on the MPC are meeting, they should be reviewing how much they've been able to achieve in terms of bringing rates down, FX volatility, and seeing how that will impact on the on on on, on food prices. And again. Um, food price. Again, the executive also have to partner with the CPM. And that's why when at the beginning of this administration, we're excited to have a special advisor on monetary policy that is in the presidency. Mm -hmm. So we expect that to be given the president advice on how to make sure that we begin to tackle this inflation and they tackle it as a team to bring it down. All right. Uh, finally, let's talk about uh, our long-term funds, that's um, pension funds and all of that. According to PENCOM, that's the Pension Commission, the net asset value of pension funds uh, in uh, U.S. Uh, dollar terms declined uh, by $18.9 billion from $33.3 billion as of January last year to about 14.4 uh, as of January this year. That's year on year. But what are the effects of all of this? That should we be worried? Because I'm thinking that... Uh, I am saving money uh, for my pension. I'm putting away money. All of the money I've been putting over the years uh, because of uh, the um, my depreciation, it might not really be worth um, anything when I really want to use the money. I don't know. You're laughing at me, Mukhtar. <laughs> but that's the reality. Yeah, that's yeah. how I see it. You, 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 you have to put up money for your pension. Eh? <laughs> you need to do that. Um, it's, it's legal. It's, um, what I mean, advise people once you have the government pension fund, you should also have your own personal pension fund for you say what you can assess at any given time. Now, when you look at that report, um, again, they are looking at January and also it now depends on the type of investment they are investing. If you looked at the report before, then they made over 200 and something percent. And when you look at that report, by and by the exchange rate, we realize that the exchange rate have moved up almost like about the 100, so the 100 of 100 percent. And so they have made more money at, 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 the, at the when you convert what they've made and with what, what the exchange rate in terms of value. I mean, they also made up to 80 something to 19 percent, which, which is which is good in any given economy. If you make that, you're, you're a fantastic fund manager. Okay. Now, when you look at inflationary pressure, they've also been able to give you a return of almost 39 percent, and inflation is still 31 percent. So, well, the problem we have is that sometimes we tend to look at a Nigerian violation vis a vis dollar, but we've forgotten that we are thinking about an ingrown economy. In as much as I don't doubt what they're saying again, it also depends on the sector that the pension fund and Mr. Tosa are employing this money. Because if they are putting this money in the equity market, then definitely that means they have been going, making it so, so much um, on returns because uh, that means that they should have been making up over a hundred and something percent. So it's all about the strategy there. Remember the pension funds, I mean, so we not just put in the fund in one place, the one who diversify their reach so that True. you don't have people, like you are saying, at a point you will not be able to assess your pension. But right. we, as it is, if you look at it, it's not that it's not growing, but in dollar terms, 
it's not small. seems not to be going but naira 10 is doing very very well and in the overall picture of the naira 10 yes. is also doing very well so okay. justin that is that is why you should still look at it like critically and make sure that your your organization continue to do those contributory pension form and yeah. you as an individual try to set up a personal pension fund for yourself because uh, for your organization what the pension fund administrator will give to you mm -hmm. might not be enough to carry out your goal and your vision at sure. the time that you are leaving that organization or you are planning to retire so it's always good to have those two in place and uh, that's why i think uh, with mm -hmm. that again you know your risk level then you'll be able to invest in, invest in various platforms mm -hmm. compared to the pension fund administrators that will need to be conservative in their returns so that they don't wipe off a lot of people's savings and life, life savings and investments. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mukta, for that um, free advisory. I don't know if you'll be floating your own PFA soon so I can actually just invest uh, in your own office. <laughs> thank you so much for all the useful insight. I do appreciate it. My pleasure, Dustin. Thank you for having me. All right. That's the size of the show. My guest, uh, Mokhtar Mohammed, is an international finance and economic analyst, and we have been looking at various some um, issues and plague in the economy. We'll return again at the same time. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there. <laughs>